Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how to work with joysticks. As you can see there is a very simple setup on the table. So here we have an LCD, there is an Arduino Nano and here is our joystick and everything is connected uh, on a breadboard. I will uh, show you the drawing but it's uh, very very simple. So what is a joystick? So this can be very familiar to you if you had uh, any kind of console game or something like that. So basically this is the analog controller. So by moving this uh, knob around you can uh, change the perspective for example or you can control the uh, cars or, or whatever in the video games. But uh, how does this work? So I try to remove this thing and show you. So this is just a piece of plastic with some rubber on the top so it hinders your finger to slip on the surface. But uh, what is inside here is more exciting. So first of all there is a button here. So it's a simple push button. So if you listen to this So you can see and hear that when I'm pressing this uh, stud in, then it clicks this button. So there is a shaft here, which is coming out from this metal uh, cage and it is pressing this button. And then this is just a very, very simple button. In fact, it is like this. So it, it's exactly this thing that you use for uh, breadboards and stuff like that so uh, you can see that they are identical so that is the button or switch and that is connected to the SW so when you click this thing you can read the uh, state of this thing by reading the switch and I will show you this with an attach interrupt and then there are four more uh, pins here a GND plus 5 volt I think we don't have to discuss those and VRX and VRY, so X and Y. And if you look at this thing as I show it to you to the camera, so this axis is the X. So if I push it in this direction or this direction, so along this direction, that's the X, and this is the Y direction. So up, down is the uh, Y, and the left, right is the X. So what it does, that this is basically just two potentiometers. So if you check the side of this thing, you can see that uh, on two spots, there is something here with B103267 and the same here. So these are just potentiometers and there is a smart mechanics inside that uh, helps uh, this motion to uh, work. So what we do here is that when everything is centered, so you haven't touched uh, the knob, then uh, we read half of the uh, five volt or half of the voltage, which is applied on the five volt uh, input. And then when we move it, for example, on the X axis to the left, then the Voltage will be changing between 2.5, if we have 5 volt, 2.5 and 0 volts. And if you move it to the left, uh, to the right, sorry, so this direction, then it goes from 2.5 to 5 volt. And the same is happening on the Y axis. So by default, or when it is in the origin, then on the Y uh, axis, we can read 2.5 volts. And if I push it up, then the voltage should increase, so it goes from 2.5 towards 5 volts, so on the top uh, it should be 5 volt, and when I pull it down, then it should go towards 0. So basically I short it to the ground when I uh, drive it to the edge of this cage down. And if I push it to the top, then I short it to the 5 volt, so I should read uh, 5 volts. So basically, we just have two potentiometers uh, with some smart mechanics and uh, that's how we can uh, change the position. And if I connect this thing uh, to a 5 volt uh, power supply, 
uh, I can show you how it works in practice. So I hope that the screen is visible. So I just printed the two uh, axes here. So the top is the X axis. And now this is upside down. Uh, so I try to rotate it like this. So now it's uh, it's properly aligned. So it is in the same alignment as this. Uh, and uh, the bottom uh, row is the Y axis. So X axis at the top, the Y axis at the bottom. And you can see that the voltage or the raw uh, data is a bit uh, fluctuating. So it's not perfectly 512 but uh, this is 510, 511 and uh, this is here 504 despite the fact that uh, this is pretty much uh, uh, centered. And uh, there is a zero here and that is the status of the switch. So when I push in this uh, button then uh, one, uh, number one will blink up. So if you see that so it goes back because I wrote the code in that way. I will show it to you as well. But uh, I just wanted to see if I can work with the switch. So this is so far, uh, I think it's clean, uh, clear. Uh, so let's move this uh, thing towards the right side of the screen slowly. So this should be the X axis. And you see the number is increasing. So 800, 900, 1000 and it's done and I move it in that direction so to the left side of the screen so you see it's uh, decreasing decreasing and yeah it's pretty much zero and let's check the top of the screen so this is actually decreasing and uh, if I put it down then it is increasing. So it seems like that uh, the positive direction uh, on the y-axis is different regarding the numbers. So I'm just directly reading the uh, analog digital converter of the Arduino, but uh, still it seems like that it's funny. But what I wanted to show you is that uh, you can make a very easy controlling uh, circuit with this thing but uh, you do, should not expect too much of this because this is a very cheap stuff. So you have some cheap uh, potentiometers here and some cheap mechanics. So it's a bit rough, I would say, but you can use it for like basic purposes. If you don't have high expectations, then this can work for you. I, I did a small research because I noticed some uh, flaws or errors with this thing and I want to discuss uh, that with you so maybe that will be useful for you. So I start to move this uh, joystick uh, let's say now towards the right uh, side of the screen and now I already reached the maximum value and if you see I can still pull a lot so now I, I, I don't change the value so now it's maxed out so I cannot yeah I, I just cannot move it towards uh, right more as you can see so now I slowly start to release it so the spring inside this thing will pull it back to zero so let's go back I even put this down so it will not move at all so I, I, I put I start to release it I just try to fix it so so the number is still the same and still the same, still the same, still, still, and now it starts to uh, change. So what I wanted to show you that uh, the potentiometer is not working on the full uh, range of this uh, mechanical thing. So let's say now it's working, it's in halfway. And when I move it just, let's say this much, the value is already on the maximum or at the minimum. And if you see, I still have a range of motion and the potentiometer is already not working. And I can show you this with the multimeter as well. So let's 
Let's just put this here. And what I do is I just simply connect uh, the 5 volt to one side and let's say the Y axis to the other side. So that, that, that means that I tap one of the side of this uh, thingy. And you can see that the resistance, I don't know if you can see, maybe it's better. Okay, so now uh, you can see that the resistance is 3.7. So I start to move it in Y. And now it's like very, very small ohms. So now it's 60 something ohms. And now I start to release it. And it's just barely working. So, and the same happens in the other direction. So, I just don't really understand what is happening here. So I think that this thing is mechanically not so perfect because uh, yeah, the values are not the best. And uh, nevertheless, uh, it is still useful, but uh, you cannot use the whole mechanical range of this uh, thing, which is a bit annoying because uh, yeah, it would be much precise. But uh, I just wanted to show you that uh, I have some of these things and I'm working with these things because I want to uh, build an XY table with uh, with two stepper motors and for that I, I need a joystick but I will probably buy a better more expensive joystick and uh, try the same thing with that and we will see uh, how that works but if that works I will make another video where I will show you how to wire up uh, this joystick with a stepper motor and everything uh, and how to control two independent stepper motors with uh, one single joystick and uh, what are the ideas that you can uh, implement and what are the challenges of this kind of uh, thing. So I think you saw this kind of demonstration, it was relatively easy and I hope that uh, I could uh, convey the basics of the joystick. So basically it's just two potentiometers that you move by this smart mechanics just to show you again so in this cage uh, these two axes the x and y axis is coupled in a way that uh, they can move uh, simultaneously so that, that that's the magic part of this uh, joystick or uh, joysticks in general and of course there are better joysticks with better mechanics and better uh, potentiometers so hopefully the next thing that I buy is much better than this and I can control the motor properly because here it's just, uh, it's just not uh, good for me that uh, I have so limited range with the mechanics. So enough talk about this and enough uh, demonstration. I will quickly show you the source code of this and in the next video uh, when I use the joystick again I will hopefully be able to show you the controlling of uh, a stepper motor or sorry to be more precise controlling of two stepper motors uh, at the same time so let's jump to the uh, code and let's see how this thing is implemented so let's look at the source code now and uh, let's check how we work with the uh, joystick so first of all uh, we need the library and uh, the other stuff for the LCD so that's what I do here and then I define the pins so we have uh, three pins uh, which are needed to have the full control over the joystick so we need something for the X axis and that is connected to the A0 uh, we have something uh, connected to the A1 and that is the Y axis so these are the two AD converters and then I'm using an attach interrupt con compatible pin uh, which is the pin number two the, this is a digital pin and uh, I call it analog button pin and then uh, we need the same things with the variables so for X and Y axis and the button uh, we will have to define some uh, variables and uh, these are just integers because something between 0 and 1023 uh, for these things so that can be fitted into the uh, integer 
and here we have the uh, button and I just uh, put it in a ball uh, so into a boolean so either it is true or false so we start with a false which means in our case that the button is not yet uh, pressed when we press the button then this will turn uh, true uh, I define uh, time and this is for printing data on the LCD the LCD doesn't really like when you print uh, data very frequently so I will try to avoid that by refreshing the display just uh, less frequently so let's uh, jump into the setup so here just for the sake of the tutorial uh, I will use the serial port but uh, if you just use the uh, LCD just get rid of this because it slows down uh, everything and maybe you don't want that uh, unnecessarily especially if you want to follow the joystick very quickly uh, so let's see what happens here uh, we start the LCD and I just uh, write some uh, some message on it and I wait a little bit and then I go into this print LCD function so let's look at this function now before uh, proceeding forward so what I do here is I clear everything from the LCD uh, which was there previously that was the let's say welcome message and then I just move the cursor uh, to the uh, upper left uh, corner and print out X axis and uh, still staying in the same line but a few blocks away I, I, I just print the uh, value of the analog X so since I just copy pasted this from another uh, code it just takes time to write it uh, this should be just value here as well so then I jump to the second line and you have to notice that you have to change the second uh, character in this set cursor uh, argument in order to change uh, rows so the first uh, number is always the column number and then the second number is the row number so this obviously is the y-axis and then I do the same, so I jump to the uh, 8 and then I print the value of the y-axis and that's all and then after that we define the pins so of course the x and y pins are inputs and I turn on the internal uh, pull-up resistor by saying input pull-up for the button so that is a sort of a software debouncing and then we have to start up this attach interrupt so we, uh, we, we use it with this uh, di uh, analog button and it will start this button press uh, function and it will be triggered whenever there is a falling uh, signal so let's see what is this button press uh, function does it will be very very complicated so as you can see it's very complicated so the analog button previously was false so we uh, flip it into true uh, as you might know uh, we should not do too much things in this thing uh, in the attach interrupt uh, related function so no delays no printing on the serial if it's not necessarily you should not change the uh, status of the pins by digital write and so on so I think uh, one of the most uh, simple things is just changing the value of, uh, of a variable whether it is a number so for example you can increase uh, the number of a variable or increase the value of a variable or just uh, change something uh, for example this from false to true and uh, then you can do something in the main loop and that's what I will do so I think this is a quite elegant and quick uh, solution to not to waste too much time inside this uh, interrupt uh, function so then here we start our watch or we define the zero time by uh, introducing the current time in milliseconds into this uh, variable and then let's see what we have in the main loop so in the main loop we have a read analog function and that will read the yeah 
values of the AD converters, the A0 and A1 uh, pins. And here I just have another delay. So if the time which we read now when we enter this condition minus the time that we read here, at least for the first time when the loop starts, uh, is larger than 200 and the unit is milliseconds, then we update the uh, LCD. But here you can see that instead of using the print LCD, I have update LCD and I will show you why. And now we reset the timer. So we update the value of the time now uh, with the current time. So then from this point, uh, there has to be 200 milliseconds uh, elapsed to enter this if uh, statement uh, again. So let's say we are here now. So we are at the end of the loop. So the software goes back and reads the analog. And let's say here we are at 110 uh, milliseconds. So we skip over this because we read the time uh, and uh, subtracted uh, the time from the previous loop and that was smaller than this. So we skip over this and then we start the loop again. So we read the analogs again and let's say now it's 220. And now we see, or the if uh, statement, we'll, we see, we'll see that, uh, okay, now this number is larger than 200. So we step in and uh, update the LCD. So we write the new numbers of the uh, joystick on the LCD and uh, we reset the timer again and now we start again so it, it, it works quite uh, simple but uh, then let's see what is this read analog function uh, as you can see this is again a very complicated thing so what we basically do is we just read the analog uh, pins one by one so first we read the x wait a little bit to uh, have some settling time uh, in between the two reads and then we read the uh, y-axis and that's all. We store the values in these variables and then we can use them in the other functions. And I talked about the update LCD. So as you can see here, we immediately start uh, in the block 8. And what I do here, I don't clear the whole LCD, but what I ju just do is that I jump back to the 8 where we wrote uh, for the first time, as you can see it about here. Uh, so this should be value. And this should be value, sorry. So uh, I jump to the 8 straight and I skip uh, this y axis and x axis text. And I just overwrite the area with uh, white space. And then I jump back again to 8 and I finally write the uh, value of the x axis. And then, uh, this is again just for the tutorial, I print it on the serial. And then I jump to the uh, 8 again, 8 position, but in the first row or second row, it depends on where you start the numbering because you see it's this is the zero uh, uh, row and this is the first. But obviously the physical position on the screen is the second. But yeah, you get the point. So here, Again, we do this uh, trick by overwriting the previous numbers with white space, and then we write down the real values. And here, finally, uh, we will do uh, the y-axis uh, update. So we update uh, with this uh, value. And here comes the point where we use the analog buttons uh, value, which were uh, changed in this uh, attach interrupt function. So let's say we change it and then the loop uh, starts over. So uh, in the read analog, we are still uh, having the value of the analog button true. And then we enter the update LCD uh, function. So it is still true. So we will enter this and we jump to the very end of the screen. So if you remember, I was showing you that uh, in the corner of the screen, there was zero. And when I press the button, it changed to one for a, for a short uh, period of time. 
So this is what uh, happens. So I clicked the button. So this was true. So we allowed the software to enter this uh, thing here. And so we jump there to the very uh, last uh, block where we can print on the LCD and we print a one there, just an indication. And also now for the demonstration, I will print something on the serial, but uh, you can potentially delete this or just comment it out. It's up to you. And then here I reset the uh, value to false. Why? Because this will allow us to wait for another click. So we can press the button again and we can come back here again. And of course, this is just a, an example. By clicking the button, you can do something else. But this is basically the uh, main principle that I want to well, not necessarily teach, but uh, show you that uh, when you use the attach interrupt, what you have uh, here, uh, you should not do anything else or something very different than just changing the value of something. For example, here we have this boolean. So whether it is true or false, it's up to you. But here uh, we changed it from false to true. And then in the main loop within one of the functions, we uh, checked the value of this uh, variable and we did something according to the value of the variable. So here, that's what we did. Uh, we checked it was true. So we entered this and at the end of the uh, if uh, statement or condition, uh, we just changed it back to false. And when it is false, then we can change it back to true again by another uh, click of the button. So we can enter this again. So you can do something else based on this, for example, light up an LED or increase the value of a variable. I mean, if it's a number, you can apply some increments or decrements, it depends on you. So this is what. And uh, if it's false, then we just keep printing zero there. So uh, most of the time this will happen. And let's see what happens in the serial port. So I just open the serial here and we are waiting for the reset. So uh, you can see that uh, the numbers are printed and for some reason we had a button pressed uh, message, but sometimes it's just noisy. So you can see that these are the numbers which are the, let's say, zero position. So now I start to change the X value towards the right side of the joystick. So I should be increasing these numbers. And you can see that it went up to 1019. And this is pretty much the maximum. So now I change uh, the joystick to the other direction. And you can see that it went down to three, two, something. So now back to zero or back to the origin. So let's move the Y axis. So now it went up to uh, 1018, 17. And let's move it down. So again, it's jumping between two, three and four. Now I just round so you can see that. Uh, it's lagging, of course, because I'm not updating that quickly, but I can uh, quickly show you that uh, this is actually working very fast. So let me turn this off. And what I have to do is, uh, now I just write a random. So every one millisecond we update, that should uh, look quite continuous for us. And uh, I don't know how much the Arduino will like this, but uh, we will see. So let's see. Well, it's uh, still lagging because uh, I have the LCD uh, as well. So we can skip over that and uh, see what happens if we skip the LCD. Because I strongly believe that the LCD is actually slowing down this thing. So it's not only the serial uh, print, but uh, the LCD. So let's put this back to 200. And then this is sort of a live or real time uh, stuff because I just came up with this idea. 
So what we have to do is we just modify this part. And what we do here is we just cheat and copy paste everything, but we have to make sure that we don't mess up anything. And uh, once I copy paste it, I will explain. So now, uh, I mean, this is the very, very simple uh, implementation of this thing. So what we do, we only have the read analog uh, stuff and the read analog function, we get rid of the LCD. So we will not update anything on the LCD. And I just show this to you as a demonstration. So what we have, we read the analog, uh, pass the value of the analog uh, to this variable, and then we print this message uh, or this letter on the serial port. And in the same line, we print the value of this. And we repeat the same with the uh, y axis. So we read the value from the y axis and print it. And maybe we can decrease this to 50. I don't know what should be the exact value, but since we print on the serial, that already introduces some little uh, delay. So maybe this will be fine. And this should look uh, quite continuous if, if I'm right, but uh, we will see. Uh, it's more continuous, so you can see that it's working nicely. Of course, uh, uh, we can try that as well, since uh, it doesn't, yeah, it, it's not taking any time. But I mean, if you want to use this, this should be quite nice. I mean, now I'm just uh, moving this thing around uh, quite randomly. And you can see that the numbers are almost coming uh, like real time. And of course, uh, both the Arduino and the serial terminal can slow down a little bit. So uh, that can be a problem. So let me change this to this and this to this. This should allow us uh, some, s I don't know where is the bottleneck to be honest. So maybe the bottleneck is in the transfer uh, speed, but no. Yeah, it seems like uh, the terminal is this this much good. Or maybe the Arduino is this much uh, slow. So it takes some time. Maybe I can just do this for, for a last check. Yeah, it's pretty much the delay. So you can see that uh, now this is an, a bit overkill, but uh, we can pretty much uh, change this real time. Uh, this is not necessary. So I don't think that we ever need this quick speed or this quick reaction time for uh, handling the uh, joystick, but you can see that it works. So yeah, uh, you can play a lot with this and uh, you can do a lot of things based on based on the joystick. So you can control uh, the speed of something or the movement of something. You can uh, control the brightness of something. So I think uh, smart stuff uh, can be to change the PWM value. And also there are other things that you can uh, just control by this analog controller. So this was the, uh, let's say, introduction for the analog controllers. I will try to get uh, a better analog controller maybe during the next week and I will see how uh, I can work with that and if that will work uh, properly then I will show you something very cool with uh, several or multiple uh, stepper motors. So I hope that this video was useful and uh, I hope it helped you to some extent and you enjoyed it. Please uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, you can also leave uh, comments if you have any questions or something like that. And now uh, I started my website, which is curiousscientist.tech. Please uh, check it. At this time, it is very simple, so I don't have too much things there. But for example, I share all the parts that I'm using. Uh, you can check uh, everything there. You can read about some other stuff. So I will build that website up uh, slowly and slowly. So I hope you enjoyed this and see you in the next video.